Craig, as you and I have been here, we have never yet heard the song when the squirrel went berserk in the first self-righteous church in the sleepy little town of Baskagoo. <laughs> is that a first in this building? <laughs> Man, it's good to be here. This is church. The world is finding out through tragedy. It was a tragedy. Uh, and we don't know it near as much as you who were here. Some of you waited the thing out. And uh, you went through it, and you saw the water come, and you saw the damage done. But in, in a lot of ways, in a lot of ways, in a smaller version of 9-11, it forever changed the world. I don't think our world will ever be exactly the same. Now, we may do some worse things and better things, but it's sure enough different because of 9-11. And it's sure enough different because of August... Some of y'all remember, don't you? <laughs> Amen. And that's right. And you know what? We shouldn't forget. And we should take tragedy and make treasure out of it. In a lot of ways, you have. See, here's what's happening to young people all over, the, all over the country, and you guys know this, and maybe you don't see the other end, but back at home, all the youth groups are saying, now what are we going to do with our kids? You've got to keep these kids happy, boy. We want to keep them in church, we want to keep things going well, so we better take them to Disney World, we better take them, to, we better take them on, on wilderness track, and we better take them skiing, and we better take them to this resort and that one. And I believe all of those are good things. But they're saying, beside all of those really high dollar things that they could go to enter, keep our kids entertained, or maybe we could take you to Pascagoula and sleep in tents or at the glove factory, you know, and, uh, <laughs> and clean up trash and walk with your flip-flops on the ground. We don't dare say thongs anymore, do we? <laughs> May the Lord help us. I heard that squirrel go in reserve one more time. <laughs> but in the kids, hands down, choose to come here. <clears throat> Let me tell you what's happening in Tulsa just briefly. We don't have much time this morning, and I don't really care. Uh, we're just going to spend a little bit of time together. i got a lesson to give, and I may give it, may not. You won't know the difference because I didn't tell you. <laughs> uh, but in Tulsa, Oklahoma, you know, you guys back up to last November, I guess it was, that I came uh, after getting canceled because of the hurricane coming and then uh, coming back later and working with it and preaching a few nights, kind of lift people's spirits. And, 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 and I, I just decided, you know, if along this 800-mile coastline, if, and apparently everybody's doing this, if everybody just picks a place, and I roll on my website, I choose Pascagoula. Amen. And so I'm just going to keep coming until you're normal. Now, I never did find out you never were normal to begin with. <laughs> that's another story. <laughs> but that's what we're going to keep doing. And so here we are back. In fact, a few weeks ago, you met my son-in-law, Dale Brzee, the bashful one in the family, <laughs> with my three grandkids and a bunch more. And they were swallowed up in about 70 at that time that they were all here. And then I brought with me, uh, you met Cecil through the prayer, and Larry, who's also here, and you also have already known Craig. The four of us are, are together. And we come in back in June. And here's what's happening in June. We can't, literally, we cannot keep people from coming. They just say, yeah, me too, me too. Now, we work with an inner city group in Tulsa. And the inner city church is where everybody's poor. You know, they don't have any money. And, and, and they come into church, and we work with them, and we give them... We give them food and clothes and so forth. And then they find out we're coming to Pascagoula and they say, we want to come too. No, no, you guys can't come because you're poor. And they can come, can't they? Amen. Amen. And they can feel involved in the work. I recently began going to another congregation that Larry's from, Park Plaza Church of Christ in town. And I went to lunch with a preacher the other day and said, you're doing what? And I said, well, I go to Africa. And he said, I want to go with you. I said, well, we're going to Pascagoula. He said, me too. You know, and right away. And all of a sudden he said, can all of our college students go? And I didn't know all the college students wanted to, but that's what's happening. That's what tragedy does. Uh, it does a lot of things. And so uh, 
in just a few, I don't even know whether I'll get to this or not, but I'm not going to tell you this instead of, it's going to be fun being together. Go to that youth rally tonight, and I guess uh, I just found out this morning it's an area thing in another city, and that's going to be great for Craig to be a part of that and to get all these kids together and tell them how exciting it is to be a Christian. Because in times of tragedy, it is even more exciting. It's not orderly. That's what bothers a lot of people. We want to clean and orderly. And this church building with all the clothes back there is not orderly. But it's the way church ought to look. Amen. Amen. It really is. Amen. If Jesus were here today, it wouldn't be so much clinical church and everybody watching their watches and everybody, you know, watching how you dress and all this stuff. We would be out there finding hurting people and helping them. Like Robert Schuler one time said, the way to build a great church is to find the hurt in the community and heal it. And that's what really we are forced into doing now. And I hope you never get out of that mode. Stay there. I don't know. It's so easy to talk to people about the Lord in this town. Last night, our waitress was Christy out at the... That, that, uh, Blood and Bucket, where we... What was the name of that place? You know... And she said, wait a minute, I'm working Monday and Wednesday night, but I could come to you tonight. This morning, three of us were over in the, the uh, uh, Waffle House, and uh, Virginia waited on us there, and she said, well, wait a minute, I could come. And, and, you know, it was so easy to talk to people, because all you got to do is ask, how are you doing? How did the hurricane affect you? How long ago has that been? And it is still ever with us. And some of that is, oh, I hate for it to always be with us. And in a way, it has forced us to be neighbors and friends, and we really care about other people. Yes. I was mowing one lawn yesterday and decided, well, you know, in the next yard, I started mowing over the other yard. They didn't seem to mind at all that I was mowing their yard. <laughs> <laughs> they really minded when I gave them the bill, but that was a different story. <laughs> <laughs> well, what the hurricane does for us, it, 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 may, it equalizes all of us. You know that. Uh, the hurricane did not say, oh, before we go in there, where are the rich people? And the poor people, because we sure don't want to touch the rich people here. I mean, they got knocked away the same as everybody else. So it equalized us. And it, it made a lot of things not important. Now, I don't want to get in on the dress issue either, because in a lot of places that bothers people. And some people are very sincere about it. The Lord's house. And I really want to. It's Jesus. Boy, and I want to be here and put on my best. I honor that. I honor that. I doubt that it's very practical. Because I'm going to tell you that I know a guy that decided he ought to start a church in Las Vegas. Felt heavily led. The guy's name's Kevin Older. He's a real stinker. I'm going to tell you that. But the guy. But anyway, that's the preacher in Las Vegas. Didn't want to raise his kids in Las Vegas, but he felt the Lord heavily calling him, so he went out there. And they got to looking around, and they thought, how are you going to lead people in Las Vegas to Christ? And decided right away, if you go out there dressed in three-piece suits and stuff, most of the people don't dress that way, and they're not going to listen to you. So he thought, let's dress nice, let's be clean, but let's dress the way they dress, and let's go where they go. i got to tell you this, one morning in that church that now totals, in just a few years, 10,000 people on Sunday morning. They're your brothers and sisters in Christ too, by the way. Been baptized into Christ. Well, a lady came to church that morning in real tiny shorts. I don't think that's appropriate at all, by the way, which is beside the point. And a little halter saw, crying like mad, and because, because the members have been trained like you are being trained, Get these people at the door, man. Make sure that they're friends and come sit with me, you know. We don't want anybody to be a stranger. So they were all saying to this little old girl, all painted up, she was obviously one of them. If you don't know what one of them is, ask me later and I'll laugh with you. <laughs> High dollar too, by the way. Had a water bills like that, which in tears she threw into the plate that morning. $800 when they counted, took the rubber band off and counted it. It was her next money for her, for her heroin, drug addiction, buy. And come to find out she'd lost her child. Her child was with her mother in Missouri in a fine Christian church up there trying to raise the right. She said, Mama, I want my daughter back. And she said, you're not a fit mother. And I love you, but you're not a fit mother. And you know it. you don't need this child. She said, I know you're right, but 
I want my daughter. And she figured the only way to get her daughter back was get right with God and find the church. Long story made short is they led that woman to Christ. She married one of their single preachers on staff and that lady is now on staff in that church. And they do a marvelous work among prostitutes on the streets of Las Vegas. Amen. Now ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know it, that's church. Yes. We're so glad all of you are here and I don't know who you are. I just look around there and you look about as weak and miserable as I am. <laughs> about as lost and sinful as I am so I feel right at home. <laughs> Which is what Jesus did, didn't he, when he preached? Luke 15 is the story that we all remember. Remember those stories of the lost sheep, verses 3 through 8. The lost coin, verse, uh, uh, no, 3 through uh, 7. Lost coin, 3 through 8. Uh, two lost boys, 11 through 32. You know, and, but we don't see that the first two verses of that story said, and Jesus got up to preach. Craig, like you and I, get up to preach. Looked around the audience. And the scribes and the Pharisees and the publicans and the sinners were there to hear it. <laughs> Not like this audience. <laughs> there is in every audience the scribes and the Pharisees and the publicans and the sinners. But the problem was, Jesus, aren't you glad I'm not this much like Jesus? He knew their thoughts. Oh. Because you're fooling me this morning. And I think, my, my, how pious they all are. <laughs> See? <laughs> but they were thinking, and Jesus could read their thoughts. This preacher is not a man of God, obviously, because if he were, he would let those people in there worship in here with us. Well, those were the scribes and the Pharisees looking down their noses at the publicans and the sinners. Like some of us did. God help us, maybe some still do. And Jesus is thinking in his heart, how can I make people quit looking down their noses at other people? Now before we leave all those, just kind of consider that for us. Those are good questions for us. When are we going to do that? It sometimes takes a hurricane, doesn't it? To make us quit seeing color. To make us quit seeing money. Clothes. Oh, there's not a design lapel on his hip. You know? Those are old Walmart jeans. You know, we do that. How can I make people quit looking down their noses at other people? How can I make them realize we're all sinners, we're all lost, and need saving, and we've got somebody who will save us, who wants to save us. Praise the Lord. So to answer and get rid of all that junk in the audience, Jesus said, hey, everybody listen. There was a shepherd, and that got their attention because they all understood shepherds. He lost one sheep that he lost, left all the good ones in the church building, oh, in the fold, and went out to search for the one that was lost. Actually, it was down there on the street there next to the water. Uh, where the sign read, uh, don't let Katrina steal your joy. And found it and brought it home. And he's thinking about, well, this is men, and there's women in the audience. So he said, hey, which woman among you that has a tin coin lose one? What do you do? Oh, man, the women could remember the last time. Seven, eight, nine. Oh, where's that other coin? You know, and... Uh, Swept the whole house, lit a candle, going to work all night to find that one. So that's what the whole stories were. And I'm already way off way in the sermon for this morning. But just say, this is what church is. And Jesus is telling us, the more you are interested in lost sheep, and there's a lot of lost sheep out there, and a whole bunch of them in here. And there's some lost coins out there. Let me tell you about lost coins. Lost sheep wander off, don't they? How do coins get lost? They're lost because of the carelessness of other people. That scares me. To death. That, that breaks my heart. How many people are lost because of us? Our dumb carelessness. Our stupid starchiness. You know? Our looking down our noses at 
somebody else because they don't look like us or act like us. And we don't want them in here with us when it isn't our church to begin with. You can start talking about your church when you die on the cross for it like my Jesus did. So Katrina has made us what we ought to be. And in all of your sorrow, I'm so sorry for all of your tragedy. I cannot imagine the tragedy you've gone through. But thank God for Katrina for what it did to you. Made you the people of God. Brought you into fellowship with God's people in Canada. What do they know about anything? Where is it anyway? You know? I got a good Canadian friend, you know, that I preached with Saturday night during the workshop. By the way, thank you. Those of you that came. He says he married an American. He says, so I speak both languages. I speak Canadian, A. Hey? And I also speak American, huh? <laughs> so, Canada, West Virginia. I don't know whether you've kept record of it. You lose track after a while, John, don't you? Of all those, I, when I was here the first time, during, after Katrina, and all those vans from Church of Christ everywhere. I'm so proud to be a member of the Church of Christ. In some places, it's the first time. Because other times you said, I'm a member. Where do you go to church? I'm here in Jordan Line. You know, we had such a bad reputation a lot of places, you won't tell them. I'm in that group over there. You know, that, well, where, what? That was, you know, that's no But now I go, I'm in the Church of Christ. Because everybody now knows in this area who the Church of Christ is. They may not know what we believe, but buddy, they know what kind of people we are. And what kind of people are we? We care. We want to help. Anybody, everybody. And once in a while, we've got to say this just to laugh at ourselves. Once in a while, there's still some of those left. There's still some of those Church of Christers left. That want to argue, and I'm not too sure it's scriptural to help non-members. Oh, God help us. All you've got to do is read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and watch Jesus. And if you need a scripture, and surely you don't, but if you need one, you just go to Galatians 6.10. Let us do good unto all men. Especially the household of faith. Now all men is everybody. I mean the white, the black, the rich and the poor, the Catholics and the, pro the Muslims, the atheists, the prostitutes, anybody. Because that's what Jesus did and that's what the book says. And then, because of the Bible says, especially those of the household of faith, you do the little, what, 15 block thing? That's it close by. So you got circles, just like Jesus said, preach the gospel in Jerusalem, Judea, Wall, Samaria, whoa, I don't want to there. So that's the same thing you follow here. Now we're going to help. What are we going to help first? Members of the church. Amen. Don't let us ever let any member, please member, speak up. We got some members, I ain't going to ask them why we're going to help. Well that's how much not like Jesus you are. That's how much like you have been reading your Bible like you should because there were, in Scripture, says there were no needy persons among them. And we don't want to do, don't let, while we've got the focus of the entire world, don't you dare let a single widow in this church go without every need being supplied. Amen. Mm -hmm. Haven't got our sheetrock up yet, needs a new microwave. We're going to get it done. What can a little old church in Pascagoula do? Buddy, we're connected to Canada! <laughs> <laughs> we got people... <laughs> Isn't it great? Isn't it great to be a Christian? Amen. Notify your face. <laughs> Notify your face. Some of y'all still the secret service. <laughs> it's wonderful to be a Christian. Anyway, uh, those circles, and we'll, and we'll get out here and be done. Jerusalem, that's our... That's Pascagoula Church of Christ. Judea is the 15 block area. That's a wonderful plan. Man, where are we going to start? We get lost. So just 15 blocks within this church, draw a radius and all, buddy, we're going to fix everything. We're going to clean every yard. We're going to mow every lawn. We're going to get all the mold out, put sheetrock in. We're going to reestablish everything. So help us God. And, and see, I just decided, one little guy is what everybody else is doing. I just said, I choose Pascagoula and I'm going until they're normal. And y'all never will be normal. <laughs> Good to hear that. <laughs> Woo! It's wonderful not to be normal. They expect too much of you to be normal. 
<laughs> but I'm just going to keep coming. And it, I'm not telling you this either to be whatever. It, but it isn't ever going to cost you a dime either. In transportation or on, on fee, on, we're not doing that. Because we finally shoved I know we got to do money stuff sometime. But this ain't one of the times. See? It's time for us now just to be family. Now, we are sponging on Gary and Lori here in their garage apartment, and they may need that welded together when we leave, but anyway. <laughs> but we're coming down here to be family together. That's our Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. It's all Pascagoula. And we're already talking about it could happen. This is a crazy thing because this is a new problem with you guys, but it could happen that all these volunteers can become a burden as well as a blessing. It could happen sometime they're going to be more of a burden than a blessing. So what are we going to do? Don't come! Don't, don't dare do that. Learn to farm them out. What's that little plane close by? Not Biloxi, but a little, little bitty... What's a little bitty town that you don't hear of in the news? Hmm? Ocean Spring. Oh, at Ocean Spring. How far away, sister? You see, suppose Ocean Spring, I don't know what they're doing out there, but suppose nothing is being done. All those people just, but you don't hear them on there. You need New Orleans on the news, you know that. Only place that was ever hit is New Orleans. You might think that uh, watching the television. But Ocean Springs. It might be just say, listen, John, why don't you tell David you handle Pascagoula right now, and John will temporarily, there's a bunch of volunteers coming in, Marvin's group's coming back June 4 through 10, so we'll just take all of them and take them to Ocean Springs. Or we found out this morning, we said talking to Virginia at the Waffle House, well, who was it, her friend or something that uh, lost everything, said nobody's helping her at all. God, nobody. And I thought, mm. I hear my antenna was going up. I'm thinking when we come back June the 4th, all we can say is here's five people, ten people, and we're just going to say to Virginia, give us the name of your friend, and we're going to park in her neighborhood and fix that woman, see? So we're going to be able to do that. So we just keep going. And I hope there's never another hurricane, but I hope that all this keep going never stops. Because you would rob me of a blessing of coming down and doing what I'm doing. I'm a chainsaw freak. I love chainsaw. You know, the people that know me know this. Yesterday they found out, scared him to death. I got prayer in the dog's yard. Rawr! He said, cut out all those hedges. I said, he's got a foot high down all over his house. They said there's trees up there, dead, limbs cut off. They didn't know that this 74-year-old man stood on the top of a ladder, holding on one side, and a chainsaw is on prayer, and the thing falls up. I twirl him in my element. You know, that's how I work off my frustration from elders meetings. <laughs> Isn't it fun? Y'all having fun? Being a Christian? Uh, don't you wish everybody was? And uh, that's our job. Never did open that lesson, but I promise to preach you three hopefully good lessons. Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. And let's just talk, just, just get simple. Talk to people about Jesus. They're going to make it. Jesus is still there. The church is still your best friend. God's people are still the greatest people in all the world. And Jesus is the only hope. I'm glad he is the hope. And I'm here to tell the world he's the only hope there is. So we want people blessed here this week by all the work. And especially because of Jesus. Now listen, you may be in this audience this morning not yet a Christian, so I do want to finish out my, my talk this morning this way. Uh, some of you may be thinking about becoming Christian. I really ought to do that. Why don't you just do it? It's as simple in the Bible as the verse we use more than any. Acts 2.38, Jesus, Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, and you will receive the remission of sins, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, and Jesus will add you as saved people to the church. What a deal! And some of you in this audience, I can't believe it. But some of you have never yet decided to take Jesus out. I'm just going to repent, turn from sin. I'm going to be baptized into the likeness of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Jesus said, boy, if you do that, I'm going to take over and give you 
the remission of every sin you have ever committed. What a deal. And some of y'all have been working at it a while. But you're going to get forgiven of all of it. Amen. And indwell with the Holy Spirit of God. And added by Jesus to the blood, <clears throat> to the blood of the church. Maybe you've wandered away and you need to come home. We call that rededicating your life. Because we do run away from the Lord. And we give you an opportunity this morning. We're going to sing a song of invitation. And if you need to come forward, or let's, let's broaden the invitation to this because it's just a chance to help you. If because of the hurricane which affected you physically and we haven't even got around to the emotional, if we can be emotional help because we've got to start finding out to provide a But if in any way, audience, and every night this week, if you need help, don't even know what and how, if you'll just come forward and let us know, I need help. We'll sit down with you and work on that and do the best we can because of Jesus who can fulfill your every need, solve your every problem, put you on the right road for now and later. So if you need to respond, I'd like to do that. We're going to sing this song of invitation and you come forward up here to the front right now. While we stand, let's sing.